Welcome to Guns, Guns, Gear, and Guns with Gary Gunderson. I am Gary Gunderson. The Supreme Court's ruling in the Bruin case was a win for gun rights, changing concealed carry from may issue to shall issue. One misstep is allowing governments to ban carrying in so-called sensitive places. To their credit, they did try to outline what this meant in a historical context, but that has already been largely ignored. Many states, as you can imagine, reacted poorly to this decision and immediately started passing new gun laws that make it as inconvenient to carry as possible, undoubtedly violating Bruin. Probably no worse than Hawaii, where Governor Josh Green signed Act 52, which makes it nigh impossible to carry a firearm within the Aloha state. Let's go over the places where it is banned to carry, even after you go through all the hoops to get a license and register a firearm to carry. Any building used by the state or county, including their parking lots, any hospital, including parking lots, any correctional facility, including parking lots, any bar or restaurant which serves alcohol, so essentially all of them, and you guessed it, including adjacent parking. Which means if you want to stop in at a restaurant and not even drink, you can't even leave your firearm in the car while you're inside. Let's just assume all further banned areas include the parking lots as well, because they do. Any stadium, movie theater, concert hall, or place where essentially any sporting event is held, public library property, any college premises, any school premises, not including a private residence where education is provided for children if they are all related or a personal dwelling when not in use as a child care facility. You see, they were gracious enough to allow you to carry in your own home if you homeschool as long as it is only your kids. If other kids are there, you can't have your firearm while they are still there. Continuing the banned locations, any beach, playground, or park, including all state parks, monuments, county parks, tennis courts, golf courses, swimming pools, or other recreation areas under control of any sort by the state or county. Oh, excluding authorized target ranges. And glancing at a map in regards to beaches, that appears to be about all of them? Any shelter or residential program facility ran by the government or charitable organization serving unhoused persons, victims of domestic violence, or children. So if you're at a shelter to get away from your abusive ex, guess what? You cannot legally carry a firearm to defend yourself. Any voter service center or polling place, any bank, any public transportation or their associated facilities, any amusement park, aquarium, carnival, circus, fair, museum, water park, or zoo. Also, any public gathering, public assembly, or special event on property open to the public, including demonstrations, marches, rallies, vigils, protests, picketing, and the street or sidewalk adjacent to these events, provided they post signs clearly along the perimeter. They do have some exemptions for firearms exhibits, hunting, security forces, evidence in a trial, etc. They specifically call out it is legal to have it within your own home as long as you aren't housed in a university or shelter. They also allow you to walk through one of these aforementioned public gatherings if necessary to access your residence, place of business, or vehicle as long as you don't loiter. Well, that's a lot, but there's more. You are not allowed to carry a firearm onto any private property with what was dubbed the vampire rule without explicit permission. You need to be explicitly invited in with a firearm, either written, verbal, or on a clear and conspicuous sign at the entrance. So they ban it on all public property and ban it on all private property, except where explicitly given permission. So it's essentially banned, what, 98% of the state? Unsurprisingly, lawsuits have already been filed on the law that took effect July 1st, 
And given the Bruin ruling, I would not be surprised if they come back and more explicitly define what is a sensitive place because Hawaii's answer was everywhere. There are other various measures in this law as well. When you carry, you always have to have your normal ID, carry license, prove the firearm is registered to you, and disclose you are carrying if speaking to the police or authorities where you need to present these items. If you leave your firearm in your vehicle, it needs to be locked up and the glove box or trunk does not count. Obviously no drinking or drugs while carrying. You can't accidentally reveal you are carrying. Like if your shirt rides up and someone sees while you're reaching for something, that there is a crime unless it is your own residence or proper self-defense. They define conceal so that if it's heavily printing, even if no part of the firearm is visible, it could still be a crime if a reasonable person without law enforcement training is able to detect it. To get a firearm, even an antique, you need a permit which requires the normal items for a background check, but also signing a waiver allowing the police to go through any mental health records you have. And if you pass, there's a minimum 14 day waiting period, but they graciously allow themselves up to 40 days to approve or deny. You need to go through this process for every single pistol you purchase, regardless of how many you already have. While for a rifle or shotgun, the permit is good for all rifles and shotguns for one year. They can also deny the permit if they determine you lack the essential character or temperament necessary to be entrusted with a firearm. Well, what determines that? Well, that mental health information you allowed them to see, which is disqualifying if you had suicidal or homicidal thoughts within five years. It could also be statements or actions indicating dangerous or violent animus towards one or more individuals or groups, including all your normal protected classes. That can't be abused at all and that this violent animus is what is objectively indicated to a reasonable observer. Or just quote unquote, other information to reach a conclusion, it would be a danger, so they included a catch-all. Careful, if you posted a spicy meme, they may conclude you are too dank. I mean, dangerous. You will also be denied a permit if you have not had a hunter safety or firearm safety course within the last four years. There's a lot more in this law, but most of it is the standard stuff. They can remote if you commit a crime. You can appeal a denial. Your safety course has certain requirements. The one thing I found random that I don't think I have seen in any other states is that it explicitly says, even if you pass all the requirements and are carrying in one of the 10 places it's legal to carry, you can only carry one firearm at a time. I don't personally carry a backup firearm, but it's odd to me that it would be explicitly denied. They also grant qualified immunity to healthcare workers so that you can't sue them if they tell the police you are not mentally fit to have a firearm unless you prove they acted with malice. No way that could be abused with subjective views at all. Once again, they talk about the importance of mental health, but then you can potentially punish people by revealing their mental health to others. So yeah, Talking about your feelings could come back and bite you. That's not a dangerous precedent at all. That's pretty much the new law. I am hopeful that the court cases will be able to yield some positive results by striking this down because these gun control states are acting crazy, violating Bruin all over the place, and they don't care because even if it is tied up in courts, they can tell their constituents that they did something and also can probably have it in place for a few years while the courts sort it all out. What do you think of the new law? Does this sound worse than the others like New York's? Let me know in the comments below. Please join the Patreon. All that money will come back and funnel into the channel so I can do more videos. There's a public discord you can join. There's memes, random discussions, whatnot. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more content, like the video and share it with others. Thanks for watching.